Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back again today. We're going to talk about my training, my current PRs, big PRs this week, feeling very, very strong. We're going to talk about beltless training, when, how, why, why you're misusing your belt or misusing your beltless training. Before we dive in, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, give this thing a thumbs up, check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Silent Mike with two Ks, streaming four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Brand new gaming channel, Silent Mike Gaming, check it out, link in the bio daily videos for all my nerds out there come kick it come say what's up we're building an awesome community so we talked about my programming getting back into the gym whether it's a long break vacation injury whatever it is and basically you can rely on linear progression you can build your way back up um, with sets of three five etc on very specific movements and just add load weekly kind of depending on your base and how strong you are you can add you know two and a half to, to five ten percent even weekly so for me that was 20 so maybe even 50 pounds weekly just hitting triples on squat bench dead. My main accessories, uh, any kind of pull movement, chin ups, rows, and the front squat uh, as I wanna build my little quads back up to see what we can sumo. So now that we're four, five, six weeks back into the comeback, now that linear progression is kinda of run out for me. Um, now it's time to buy, build on my strength back. I found my baseline. I don't necessarily know where my strength is in terms of PRs, but you know, mid 300s bench, maybe a 500 pound squat, and maybe around a 600 pound pull. And that's with, again, a long break and just getting up there. My work capacity, my general volume, conditioning is still pretty low, um, but we kind of neurally adapt. Um, you got the skill set back to pull those kinds of weights. So now it goes back to kind of what my normal programming may look like. Um, for myself in an off season, um, I just kind of, I wouldn't say wing it, I have a general plan and I have guidelines that I go by in my head, but I'm not writing down my exact RPE and I'm not writing down my exact load. Basically what I do is I have an idea of the load I want to hit coming up to a meet, with, or sorry, coming up to a training day. Uh, and then based on how I feel that day, I'll kind of judge back off or add load. So last week went nice and heavy, felt really good. Uh, started sumo pulling. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work up uh, two days on one day off, two days on, one day off in my training split. Again, one day is kind of squats, uh, bench and push. One day is deadlifts, front squats and pull. Uh, the main two kind of patterns going back and forth will be a heavy two days in a row on my main movements. Uh, that's belted uh, low bar squats. That's bench belted sumo poles and belted front squats. And then on the other days, uh, it's just gonna be beltless and perhaps sleeveless. Um, I think everyone still believes that this belt is like this miracle and going beltless is a miracle. And that's kind of what we wanna talk about today in general training. Um, I think some beltless work is good and it can help you, but it's how you apply it. And most people think that you can do this beltless training cycle or have beltless days and they get the super compensation when you put on your belt and all of a sudden you're gonna be super strong. I think the best use of not using a belt, going beltless, is actually just to limit yourself. Limit the load on your body and limit the fatigue. So on my light days, I'll just be going beltless uh, simply because my confidence in my lift and the actual load I can actually lift is probably less. Um, I don't think a belt adds 20, 30, 40% to someone's one rep max. Uh, if that's the case, uh, it's probably more of a confidence deal than the belt actually adding that much load. And so for me, I do, I, everybody feels a little more confident when they have a bunch of gear on, it feels warm, the proprioception, and it does add support for sure. Uh, but point being is that those light days are kind of forced light days. Same thing you can do is kind of like underload lifts and you can do something like a deficit pull, a paused lift, a tempo lift, maybe something against bands and chains depending, uh, or even do more reps uh, depending on what your training cycle is. And that's ways to not always just lift maximum amount of load. Um, powerlifting, squat bench dead, and the techniques that we're most comfortable with are the way to lift literally the most amount of weight in the gym. Um, and doing that all the time won't lead to CNS burnout like all you kiddos think, uh, but it can lead to overall fatigue. I mean, CNS, again, I've ranted on this a million times, that is like what we are and what we do. So yeah, uh, but general uh, systemic fatigue. So I'm, I'm balancing my loads, balancing my workload um, by going beltless um, basically every other session. Um, and then on top of that, I'm just kind of hitting top, uh, top sets of, of singles, doubles, and triples. Um, depending on how I feel, it's going to be anywhere from like an RPE 8, uh, depending again how I feel. I had a great conversation, uh, Instagram conversation with a legend. 
uh, Mike Tashir, uh, legend lifter, and now most of you know him as a coach, but he was a stud lifter back in the day. One of the guys I really looked up to and kind of, uh, you know, the, the natural or the drug tested um, raw world when, when it wasn't cool to be raw and it definitely wasn't cool to be natural. Um, I don't even know if it is cool to be natural anymore or what's going on, but uh, I learned a lot from that guy and, and he basically came off a, a long break also and he posted on Instagram how weights are feeling um, way heavier than they're moving. Um, RPE is a little weird because you want to base it on performance, um, but RPE means rate of perceived exertion and what perceived exertion would mean is kind of how it feels But that's not necessarily what we're rating it on because something could feel really heavy on your back But you could still crush it so you could probably add load So point being weights are still feeling very very heavy to me, um, but they're moving pretty dang good So last week 545 times 3 on the deadlift uh, today. I just worked up to 565 uh, times 1 Yesterday I hit a really hard double on the squat, or really heavy double, actually not that hard, uh, which was uh, 475 I believe, uh, for a really clean double. It actually moved really, really well, uh, but since that was less than 24 hours ago, I was just a little bit tired probably, and so my pull wasn't as heavy as I wanted. Um, so I work up to that heavy single uh, double triple, back them on down, so I back down to just 455, hit some uh, sets of five on that. Uh, light front squats because my knee was just getting a little achy so just did like a plate or two for some reps and then finished up chins biceps kind of game over uh, again I'm gonna do another four to maybe eight weeks and kind of uh, chug away as much as I can at these lifts until we kind of feel things are starting to plateau or I have to use the same weights over and over with the same uh, performance you know the same feeling the same um, speed on the lifts and then I'll probably have to switch up my variations again Rinse and repeat, baby. That's programming some troubleshooting without being too complicated. So, know when and how to apply your belt. Don't think it's a miraculous thing to do a six weeks no belt, then you're gonna put on your belt and hit a 100 pound PR. Uh, sprinkle it in when you need, particularly probably off season stuff. Getting closer to a meet, uh, sometimes it's better just to get used to your equipment because it can feel funky not putting on the belt again, uh, and you wanna be uh, in the best shape you can with competition specs. So. Ladies and gentlemen, day off tomorrow, training Friday and Saturday. Next part of the video, I'll chat about what we do there. I gotta think about it, I don't know, but I'll see you Friday or Saturday. Didn't feel like working out. And uh, the internet, it goes through phases, right? Uh, what's it? Waxing and waning moons and high and low tides and um, there's other terms for that that I can't think about right now. Didn't have my morning coffee. Um, but there's like two different groups, right? That are like now trying to preach and like scream to you, like dig deep. If you listen to music, you're a pussy. Run 10,000 miles every day, deadlift every day. And then there's the other side that, that like treats you like a little butterfly, like notice your feelings. If you don't want to work out, just don't work out. Don't work out at all. Maybe you'll go years without working out, but one day you'll want to work out and go work out. And obviously the answer lies in the middle here to like be self-aware enough, turn yourself into athlete, pick and choose the days where you can push really hard. But for me, I think I am dead middle of it where I know a certain amount of, I know what it takes to get strong. I know what it takes to have a successful business. I know what it takes to have a successful YouTube just because of trial and error and, and trying and chugging along. Um, so then when there are off days like today, woke up kind of grumpy, uh, didn't sleep that well. You guys ever wake up and uh, I woke up and my eyes open and uh, you have one of two thoughts. One is like, damn, it's probably like noon. And then I roll over and I look at my phone and it's like seven in the morning or the opposite. You're like, shit, it's probably like five in the morning. You roll over and it's 10. Either way probably means like you're not sleeping good or at least for me, that means like, dang, I didn't sleep that good. Often I would just wake up around eight or nine and I'm like, man, I feel good. And that's how I know I slept well. Today was one of those bad sleep days. I had no clue what time it was. My throat was dry. I was probably snoring all night. Just that whole deal. Uh, back's a little achy part of the game. You're going to get beat up as you're trying to get stronger. And so I came to the gym and I just got enough done. Um, again, I'm not the, oh, Mike, check your feelings and just stay in bed. Uh, whatever self-care means too. I don't, there's so many mini rants I want to go on and I can't flush them out because we've got a time limit on the video. But people are saying like, just do a salt bath and that's self-care. Like go get a manicure and that's self-care. That's not self-care, kids. Like mental health is like a real thing and it's much more in depth than just getting your nails done once a week to keep yourself happy like that's not how it freaking works otherwise the entire america would be the happiest country in the world because we're so we're so materialistic and we're so, so we're so selfish and self-indulgent everyone's like going to a movie or a dinner or doing their nails once a week like then everybody be so freaking mentally healthy and we're probably the least mentally healthy country in the world if i had to uh, probably not that's a stretch but you know what i'm saying point is 
mental health's a real deal. Um, there may be times like this past fall where I had to like literally take off the gym, but other times there's times where you just have to get enough done. You don't have to go 100% every single day, but doing the small things every single day, the, the meat and potatoes of your workout, the meat and potatoes of your work over 10 years um, will give you the effects, the stimulus, both working out business relationship wise, just sending that text. Like you don't have to hang out with your best friend every single day to become best friends, right? Or stay stay in that relationship or, or marriage or whatever. But doing the small things, shooting a homie a text, yo man, think about you, hope you're good, have a good weekend. Doing the small things over a long time can build a deep friendship, build the physique and the strength you want, build the business you want. So uh, today, long story short, was one of those days for me, not feeling great, just got it done. So a uh, couple sets of five, beltless, sleeveless, it's my light day on the rotation. Uh, low bar back squats. Uh, I, I did a wider grip bench because I also was going to go light. I just didn't have the, the, the energy, the kick. Uh, we also have plans. I don't know if we're going to vlog it. That's up to Connie. But uh, we're heading to a fit expo. Say what's up to some people I haven't set up high to in a very long time. I'm pretty antisocial, so it takes a lot of, uh, what's that word? Ganas, I think is the Argentinian or Spanish word for nuts or like courage. I don't know. Correct me in the chat. Uh, so I know I'm babbling. I apologize. Squats, three sets of five, beltless, bench, wide grip, a couple sets of eight, um, and, then, and then I'm done, and then I'm done. I just don't have uh, the mental attention span today to get all my work done. I wanna go grab a coffee. I wanna go say hi to my friends. I might be a little anxious already because I gotta go you know, into this like big fitness public setting, which I'm not like used to anymore. I used to do expos every like three months for five, six years, and so you get used to that stimulus, but being you know, a little more introverted and into myself, I'm not used to that, so it has me thinking a little bit, so I'm gonna to try to avoid that feeling. So I'm not gonna put extra stimulus from the gym or pressure on myself. So grab a coffee, I'm gonna go shower, try to look pretty, uh, and head off to an expo. But I appreciate you guys. Sample week of how we're training, the whole beltless rant, know how to apply it, keynotes. Beltless, know how to apply your beltless training, keynotes. Know when to push in the gym, when to know to back off the gym, know when to take a day off, which I think is actually, if you have a program and a good coach, is really rare you actually fully take a day off. Be more self-aware. Actually work on your emotions, your, your self-care, more than just getting a manicure, a bath, and eating a cookie and saying you healed all your emotional struggles and trauma from the last 30 years. Salam like I'm out of here. Appreciate you. Catch you on Twitch. Four days a week, head over there, come hang out. Whether you like video games or not, we have a great time, great community. Cap me on my podcast, 50% Facts, every Wednesday. And daily videos, Connie's going in. Daily videos on the brand new YouTube channel. Check it out, Silent Mike Gaming, link in the bio. I'm out, y'all.